was the most fearsome hunter in North America. It was one of the few dinosaurs who would take on the horned Arctic dinosaur. This herd of Pachyrhinosaurus them down and made them sluggish. Taurus fed on horned dinosaurs, duck-billed dinosaurs. ...and hunting methods of dinosaurs like Alberta attack. These Albertosaurus know that a weak member of the... Pachyrhinosaurus was poor. If they can cause... Even though these dinosaurs could stand their ground against... The Pachyrhinosaurus are hardwired to flee the herd. This is nature's way of weeding out the sick, old, and injured. Picking up of the continent. The herd is forced. As they circle, they take turns making mock charges in the hopes of panicking the group. They get their chance when one of the herd members breaks ranks and runs. The Pachyrhinosaurus herds were made up of a few dominant males and a harem of females and their children. Albertosaurus live on instinct. The predators zero in on him and give chase. The Albertosaurus knows that separated from the herd, it's the old adage, divide and conquer. It was almost three inches thick and made of solid bone. As he turned and broken teeth fly into the air, the Pachyrhinosaurus with his long nose. The Pachyrhinosaurus could grow back its horn if it broke. One of the weaknesses out looking at their size that may seem hard to believe. So if the Packy gets lucky without really any problem, and this would not only take the Albertosaurus allowed it to pivot quickly to keep its horn and protective frill facing an attacker. Pachyrhinosaurus back, they're completely vulnerable and they have no weapons. They have no spikes, they have nothing. All of their weapons are in the front, so to attack an animal in the back of the neck behind the shield. The skin of the Pachyrhinosaurus was up to three inches thick and similar in toughness to an elephant or rhino. At the throat or rip open his belly. Those sharp serrated teeth can cut through flesh like a hot knife through butter. When you calculate the dimensions of as quickly as it knocked them down, it's back up on its feet again. The Pachyrhinosaurus had legs as thick as a grown man's waist. They were also relatively dense, like the legs of an elephant, not as hollow as those of the Albertosaurus. The thin legs of Albertosaurus arch weak or even break the leg bones. Saurus, who then goes for broke. The Cretaceous period was not as hot as the Jurassic. The temperatures were still hotter than today, but the relatively cooler climate allowed the dinosaurs to be more active. This was an advantage for the meat eaters, who expended more energy in a fight than the plant eaters. The Albertosaurus also had a cavernous stomach. It could have eaten a cow in a single meal. Its endless appetite drove it to savage butchery. The Albertosaurus paces back and forth, pushing the herd into a tighter formation. From experience, it knows that... It... The brain of the Pachyrhinosaurus can only think of one thing at a time. They react. They do not plan. If they're focused for himself, in their struggle to get away from the Albertosaurus, they begin to drown each other. Albertosaurus was not a good swimmer. Its small arms were useless in the water, leaving it to rely on its two powerful legs. But the sight of the herd floating downstream is too much for him to ignore, so he heads off to follow the river and look for an opportunity to snatch one from the water. The protective frill of the Pachyrhinosaurus was capable of showing color. 
it may have reflected the emotions of the Paki, like a billboard. In the Arctic Age, floods were becoming more common. The smell of the drowned carcasses would draw predators from miles around. Some predators of that time could smell prey up to five miles away. There are countless examples for there to feast on the remains.